Welcome to the first clip of the year. This is our first introductory clip and all I'm going to do really with this is take you through a few online use tips. How to get the most out of the videos that we're going to use throughout the year for your notes instead of taking notes in class. How to make sure you're still getting the most out of these as if you were in class. Um, if that's never worked for you well in the past then maybe this will be the, the new leaf we're turning over that will make things work better for you. And uh, along the way, hopefully you can help me figure out the best way to do some of these things too. It's all very brand new to me, and I don't think I know all the tips and tricks that you're going to help me find as the year goes on. So help me make it better. Uh, give me your feedback and uh, tips as we go, and uh, we'll try to get those things incorporated as the, as the year goes on. But just a quick, quick few tips to kind of get you on your way. So this is just a couple online tips for the chemistry videos that you'll use this year. I'm just going to take you through a couple things to kind of keep in mind for these first few uh, times around the block on these videos. And uh, as we go throughout the year, try to keep these things in mind too. And like all the videos for the class throughout the, throughout the school year, this will stay here and active and, and available to you. So you can always come back to it if you need to. So first of all, make sure to stay up to date and don't get behind. That's the usual problem that students have with, with class in, at any time is getting behind, not doing homework, uh, not, not staying up to date with assignments. These are your assignments. These are like going to, these are going to be your homework, more or less. And so stay caught up as they're assigned. Don't put them off and try to get caught up later on. Um, if you don't take any notes in class and then suddenly right before a test try to get them all from a, a neighbor in class or a friend in a different section of the same class, uh, you always end up feeling like you, you missed a lot of it or you're trying to get it all in the last few days or few hours. And it's kind of like a flash flood. You can't soak it up that way. You're going to get behind in your understanding. Uh, you won't be able to certainly do the homework, which a lot of times will more or less amount to the problems that you'll be assigned to work on while you're in class. If you haven't watched the video, you'll get to class, I'll give you some time to work on things, and, and you won't know how the heck to do anything because you haven't watched the video yet and haven't gone through the example problems or the notes on, on the idea on that assignment. So you'll have to sit and watch it in class or go to the library or, or something like that. It's not going to work very effectively for any of us, and so uh, make sure you're staying caught up for that reason too. You also won't know what kind of questions you have. If you haven't been watching the, the video, it's like not being in class. You, you don't know how to ask questions if you don't even know what the new information was about. So if you don't know what your questions are, you feel even more behind and more lost. And you certainly won't have your notes ready for upcoming quizzes and tests. I'm going to ask you to take notes, even though they're all on the screen here, to take them down into your notebook as well. And then have later some kind of open note quizzes in class using those notes to kind of benefit from those and to help me to ensure that you're getting your notes taken. Uh, into your notebook as well and you want to have all those things ready for tests as well plus you don't get to see and hear me as much if you're not watching the videos so that's a side benefit that probably isn't as important as the previous four make sure you are taking notes as you're watching you want to be sure to uh, write things down in a notebook as if you normally would in class the nice thing is about the videos if you didn't quite catch something that I say you can go back and you can watch it again, listen to the same sentence again. You don't ever have that luxury when you're sitting there in class. You can raise your hand and ask me to say it again, but after a while students stop doing that and they don't uh, always want to raise their hand and ask for someone to repeat, repeat a sentence or an idea again. I feel like they're the only one who doesn't get it. That's usually not the case anyway, but you know and I know a lot of times students just don't want to ask questions because they don't want to stick out in that way. With videos, you can go back, watch it again and again. No one's going to know how many times you had to listen to a sentence to get it, and hopefully eventually you do uh, get it. A good plan for a lot of you probably will be to go ahead and watch it through once without writing anything down, and then come back a second time and take notes that second time through. Uh, gives, yourself, gives yourself a chance to hear it, and then come back and, and hear it while you're writing the second time. Again, something you can't do in a regular class time environment, I know there's a lot of times in the 13 years I've been teaching now that uh, I've seen students try to listen and write at the same time and I know and they know that they're not getting everything I'm saying while they're writing and they're not probably soaking up what they're writing if they're trying to listen to me at the same time anyway. So maybe one at a time will work for you. If you know you've been able to do both at once in the past, then keep doing that now and see if it works. If not, you can always switch to a two times through approach and uh, see if that works for you better. Don't try to pack things too tightly in your notes. This goes for this class and really any other class, no matter how the format is of your notes. Um, give yourself some room. Spread out. Um, unless you're really running out of paper, there's no reason to squish things so tightly together. That way you can come back later, add in comments, references to uh, practice problems, notes that you come up with on the side that can help you remember things or whatever. 
Um, come back to these videos as early and often as you can. Keep them handy. They're just like your notes. Uh, if you haven't written them down yet, you'll want to. Even if you have, another time through an explanation might help. Um, it's like just one more sort of resource that you can use uh, for review, for help problem solving, for getting you through a sticky spot on a problem if it's giving you trouble, uh, getting ready for a quiz, a test, solving questions and answers even on a lab. Uh, anything at all, this might be helpful for you. And I know a lot of you might do screen captures, whether you're watching this on an iPad or an iPod or a smartphone or whatever, your computer. Um, you, can, you can capture the screen and have JPEGs or other image formats of the uh, information that's on the screen. That's fine and good if you want to do that as well, but I would definitely recommend that you do write down the notes. Uh, there's all kinds of studies out there that will show that... Um, you're able to absorb things better when you read and listen on the screen or out of a book or whatever and then write the information down as well it just it activates more parts of your brain and uh, you'll you'll learn a lot better if you do that as you're taking the notes feel feel free to pause things of course you guys are tech savvy people um, pause it write things down uh, questions as you have them make notes of things on the side of your page and uh, just hit pause, just as if you were in class raising your hand and pausing my, my information from me. I'll stop on the screen just like I'd stop in class. And you can write a question down um, and uh, uh, email it if you want. I can try to respond if it's really, really crucial that night. That's great. Um, or I can be ready to respond with it the next day in class. And uh, as I do sample problems, I'm going to do a lot of sample problems and things on the, uh, on the videos. So go back to uh, watching those with me and doing those problems with me. There are always going to be sample problems that uh, you've either got on a handout that I gave you, one from your homework or something, um, or there'll be a problem that you can copy down off the screen and put right into your notes, just as I would do on, a, on the whiteboard with you in my classroom. So go through the sample problems, work them out, even though they're on the screen. It's not the same as working them out again yourself. So try to do that as well. Remember, this whole approach is brand new for all of us. Um, well, at least it is for me. Maybe some of you have had teachers who have done this before, but it's very, very new for me in chemistry. And so if you have ideas on how to make it work better, things from other classes that you've seen work well, uh, if you have something that will make it work better in the short term for you and your class, uh, my future students in other years, if I keep doing this, let me know. And uh, I'd love to be tweaking this as we go along this year with your input. You guys are kind of the pioneers here, so help me do it right. Your perspective and feedback. Very important if there's any chance this is going to be effective for students this year and, and down the road. So I, th I thank you for being brave pioneers with me this first season out. That's it for this. The next video up will be some introductory concepts about the, the class of chemistry. Enough of this video talk. Let's actually talk some chemistry, some science, and get going with the year.